Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another video from our Substance series. This video will focus on Adobe's staging tool for scene design and rendering and it's called Adobe Substance 3D Stager. We're going to have an in-depth look at all the main tools you need to know to start staging your set and render out your design. It's going to be a super fun video, so let's get started. Alright, let's not waste any time and get to work right away. You can drag and drop your model right in here, bring it into your scene and start applying material, so on and so forth. But let's create a new scene first and I will show you how to bring the material or your models later when you understand the user interface and layout a little better. So I'm going to go to create. Let's start with how to navigate. You can hold down Alt left mouse button to orbit around, alt middle mouse to pan, and alt right mouse button to zoom in and zoom back. Alternatively, we have three buttons in here on the left hand side toolbar. You can click on this button to orbit, the next button to pan, and this button to dolly or to zoom in, zoom out. Shortcuts, number one, two, three, on the keyboard and you can see the tool gets highlighted very very straightforward now once you understand how to basically orbit around we have two main pages one page is called a design page where you do the majority of your editing you can just add content arrange it edit properties and set up your composition and then you have the render page and that render page is where you export the final high quality result, uh, which we will talk about right at the end. So I'm just going to stay in the design page and let's talk about the main panels and tools. On the left hand side, you have the toolbar and that toolbar is in charge of interacting with your content. You can select the content, you can use magic wand very similar to how you use magic wand to select the model or the material. You can sample from the material. You can create geometry, add light or move the cameras in different directions. I'm going to skip the drop down menus, the top menus altogether because there are things that you can do with simple shortcuts without confusing yourself with the drop down menus. The only time I'm going to use drop down menus when I'm going to import a geometry into the scene. Now let's get to the assets menu. With assets menu, you have four main filters. One filter is going to show you just the geometry. The other filter is going to show you just the material. The third filter is going to show you all the lights. And the final filter is going to give you images which can be used for environment lighting, can be used for studio lighting, can be used for masking, adding noise, so on and so forth. Now you can just toggle between the squarish sort of view and a list type of view just to see the names better but again that's up to you and then you have libraries where you can connect to adobe substance 3d assets for example to get your hands on more models more lights more materials um, tutorials magazines so on and so forth now i'm going to uh, switch to the geometry we have three types of geometries inside Stager. We have shapes, well, text included as well. So you can drag and drop your model in there. But the problem with, with that is it's not going to place itself at the center. You actually need to go to the properties on the right hand side, go to its transform and zero out the position so it snaps to the center. Another alternative is 
I can just click on this and press delete and I'm going to press V to switch back to my select tool. Alternatively, you can just click and it places the geometry right at the center and you have different shapes to work with. Um, and these shapes and basic shapes, actually they come with few attributes to play around with. So if I select the shape, in order to access its properties, I'm just going to look on the right hand side in the property panel and go into objects. And there I have a few sliders to work with. I can change its radius to make it more you know, higher resolution or lower resolution. It's a subdivision basically. And you get to have a different attributes per geometry. So for example, in here, we all of a sudden have bevel where I can enable the bevel and just change the bottom radius to something like, I don't know, 10 or 20 and uh, get a like a drop looking shape. Same thing with, let's say a cube where you still get also a bevel and then you can just change its radius, even turn it to a sphere, slightly different topology, um, increase its you know, subdivision, so on and so forth. So it's very, very customizable, these shapes. Um, within shapes, you have text as well, while I have you on this little topic. So you can basically type in whatever you wanna type in. I'm gonna zoom in a little, by the way, if you wanna zoom in with the model selected, just press F and it's going to frame that for you. You can change the type, you can change the, the size, depth, you can actually bevel the font, give it a little bit of an angle, space it out a little, so on and so forth. It's really, really handy, very cool. Now, I'm just going to press delete on this beautiful name right here and get into the second type of the model that you can use in Adobe Stager. That is called a standard model. Now, you may have noticed, if I go to the um, starter assets tab, you can see some of these models have a little gizmo on the right hand side. Even you can change the way that you see it and you still can see that little gizmo in here uh, or a controller or a slider icon, but some of them actually don't have those. For example, I can bring the um, good old mat from Substance and you can see it doesn't have the gizmo. We call those objects standard objects very similar to the models you may import to substance from other 3d software packages as a matter of fact we are going to have a tutorial where i'm going to bring a model and we texture it together all inside substance 3d stager but those models are all standard models the thing with standard models is there is no extra attribute to play, play around with unlike shapes so just be mindful of the fact that if you bring in a model or sometimes some of the ready to go models don't have that. Another type of model is called parametric model. And those parametric models are not just typical models. Many of them actually have been made inside a Substance 3D designer. And that allows you to actually have high level of customizability when it comes to parameters and their properties. So for example, if I bring this uh, foliage here, I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here. It's a beautiful looking foliage, but you can instantly notice that we have a high degree of control over pretty much everything. So very procedural way of working where you can just change the scale, change the height, um, min and max for leaves. You can even, you know, change uh, the, the style, uh, how much that is going to bend, uh, the amount of leaves, so on and so forth. So every single a parametric model has that little icon right next to it. It's a kind of good indication that, all right, we have a degree of control over that. So if I press delete here, for example, and just move 
a little bit down to get to, for example, wall square window and click on it, you can see that we have a, a beautiful wall with a window where we can adjust its settings. We can just change the height, bring it up. We can change the width. Um, you can even change the depth and even offset the window if you want to. Uh, you can just combine this with standard objects, like for example, a cube. I can go into a transform panel and make sure to scale uh, proportionately by enable constraint to create another wall without a window, but this time using a normal window. Now you're wondering Reza, how you move, rotate and scale. If you don't want to use this window, the good old W, E, and R on your keyboard does exactly the same thing. So I can just press R, hold down shift so it snaps and just rotate it 90 degrees. You can also put 90 in rotate Y and then push this back. And the good thing about um, Stager is it actually snaps beautifully and it kind of shows you that, all right, this is snapping now. That's very convenient. I can alt left mouse button to orient and just um, basically get an accurate result if I want. You can accompany that with, um, let's say a plane, a normal poly plane, and then go ahead and increase its size as well to, I don't know, um, a random value. Move that here again, snap and snap and get the job done. Now, before I get into action panels, you need to be mindful of what you have on your scenes, which is like an outliner. So every time you model something, you can actually see the model inside your scene panel. Uh, the plane, I can double click on it, call this floor cube. I can call this side underscore wall. And the other one, I can just call it uh, wall underscore window simple as that so i know that's the wall with a window uh, you also get an environment as well uh, which i will talk about in a second but those um, items can be grouped you can actually improve on your scene organization using actions icon here So let's see what action does. Well, first item is very straightforward. You have the object, you can actually delete the object and that's it. I'm gonna press Control Z. The next one duplicates it. So if you want to have this wall, uh, wall window, you can actually duplicate that wall and basically move it to a side. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. You can also Oh, and that item is very useful if I have those somewhere here and here and you kind of need to kind of eyeball it see how it sits on the ground although we have a lining um, enabled and you can kind of see the color changes it can be somewhat annoying and it takes time to kind of sit the object perfectly on the ground so this button allows you to move the object to the ground so you can select that and move the object to the ground Now to use material, um, it's very simple. You just select your basic material if you want, or you select your SBSAR material, which is a Substance 3D material, um, drag and drop, and you continue with your work. So with default material, there's not much really to work with. I can just select the item, drag and drop on either the object itself, and you can see now I am switching to from object to material tab inside properties and I have access to few properties or alternatively I can drag and drop um, substance 3d material in here and if I just improve on my camera angle you can see that now I have a smart material and that gives you somewhat more options to play around with you can kind of customize and get a much better result. I can even download the material from Adobe Assets website and just 
drag and drop it on to my surface and get the result just like that so again to edit the material you go to the material tab and it's it's all up to you what sort of design you have in mind now a very useful um, option that I do tend to use obviously it really depends on your graphics card but if you do have a decent graphic a graphics card you can enable ray tracing to see things better so if I enable ray tracing which that option is also is a backslash on your keyboard so I can use backslash to turn it on and off and on and off you can see a much better representation of your shadows for example I immediately noticed that all right there's a little bit of gap in here so I'm just gonna fill that gap really quick um, I can kind of push this one really quick so my uh, wall and the ceiling aligns well so uh, you can hold down shift right click and you can rotate the environment light that you have so that's the default environment light that I'm rotating very 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 similar to 3d substance sampler you can just change the light very similar to actually Adobe substance painter you can change the HDR light that you have which comes from this environment tab to tweak things better as a matter of fact uh, you can click on this environment tab and you can change the opacity of this so I can actually um, change the opacity you can kind of increase and decrease the look of the background that you have and you can also make the environment blurrier or not blur at all so if I zoom back you can kind of see what you see in the environment so these are the options that is available to you and of course you can use them but if you have a decent graphics card I highly suggest you to use this item as it gives you a much better more accurate representation of what you have in here so as you can see I'm a little bit obsessed <laughs> with this but that's basically how materials work I can simply drag and drop a matte wall or matte color on the wall and I'm going to start kind of tweaking this wall a vibrant color something like that if I move down further you can change ambient occlusion you can change specular level for example for the floor if I go to the material and scroll all the way down I'm changing the roughness now so these are the options that is available to you now this is very very reflective floor that I have and I can just uh, change the roughness however I want to for both colors it gives you a lot of different um, options to play around with let's say very quickly you switch to your modeling uh, menu set and you just go in here and you drop in a let's say sofa it's as simple as that you kind of bring it in I can actually change the style as you can see very quickly in no time at all um, change the mattress height um, back ratio move it up and down it's just so cool it gives you a lot of different um, styles to play around with you can just push this back you know scale it a little bit move it here now you may say all right how am I gonna apply fabric to it or is that gonna be a leather just search for leather in here that's another way of um, finding what you want and let's say all right I'm just gonna go with natural buffalo leather sounds expensive so that's it even I can just change the color if that color is not to my liking um, make sure proportionate scale is there with sofa selected and I'm just gonna put in let's say 0 0.7 0 0.9 um, now I'm making a little bit of a uh, room for let's say a floor lamp so I can just go in here and drop in my floor lamp you can also bring your own model and just have fun with it and uh, get creative however you want to so much you can do with these things and you can see that for some of these objects you can actually use the groups 
So you've got the cover and that cover can be a separate material. So I can search for fabric in here and it brings a type of fabric that you can apply. You can even go in here if you really don't like the blue, you can bring it into sort of yellowish color. For um, the bolts and the frame, you can use something else. You select one of the legs and search for wood, go to let's say oak wood, and you either apply it here or you can just drag and drop it on the model. Now, um, I'm gonna show you how actually you can sample a material from an object and reapply it to other objects. It's actually very, very useful. So let's have a look at that. Now let's have a look at how we can sample a material and apply it to other materials. I'm just gonna replace this oak wood with this pine wood right here. I think it suits better. Now I can press I on my keyboard and you can see as soon as I do that, I go into that eyedropper and the icon is here as well. It's called sampler tool and click to sample a material and I can just zoom in and hold down shift to drop a material and apply that material to anything that I touch, which is just incredible. So now if I go in here, you can see I successfully applied that material um, beautifully. You can go in here and change the orientation of the material as well. And and because these are instances, all I need to do is to change one material and it changes on all the other materials. They are going to share exactly the same properties. How cool is that? So that gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of room to get artistic and um, just design things however you want to design. Now, that was a quick look on how to create different material. Again, you can have different types of um, presets. If you're bringing a Substance 3D asset, you can just go and change the preset. You can increase its resolution to just get a much better result. I can just pick that sofa and increase its resolution. Uh, you can go to preset and change the preset as well, but I just um, changed it uh, to my own taste, so I'm not going to do that. Now I'm gonna organize my scene a little bit. So I've got two walls. I'm just gonna press Control G on them. I can just bring this bookshelf right here just to add a little bit of complexity to my scene. At any point of time, if you feel like that the size is not there, you can always go in here, change the depth and change the height. You can even bring in a vase here uh, move the vase, bring it here. I can just drag and drop a material on the vase to just give it a little bit of personality. With this wood right here, I can again search for wood uh, in the material tab. I would like to select the whole thing and just apply that material to the whole piece. You can just dress the set and um, continue with your with your set. Now in the next chapter, I'm going to talk about lights and type of lights that we have that we can benefit from. Now let's talk about lights. We have uh, all the usual suspects, all the main typical lights, area light, which is just a, if I bring area light here, it's just a plane, as you can see, and that plane emits a light right? Uh, nothing too complex. You've got a spotlight, which is more like a torch. You can just bring this light. So if I select the light, bring it over to the side and rotate it and then move it up. You can see it's very similar to a torch, the way it works. Very, very similar. So I can kind of change its intensity. And again, it would be a good idea for a situation like this to actually enable ray tracing so you can kind of see things better. But that's basically how this lights hit, hit this light works, you can increase and decrease its fall off. So 
um, it can be one of those decorative lights on the ceiling that you can have um, you know study lights uh, even floor lamps uh, can use that uh, another one to work with would be a point light and it's just a point that emits light from all directions i can actually bring this one over uh, this light over here and actually move it darken the environment a little bit and now you guys can kind of see the light i can in increase the exposure and see the effect of it and um, you've got usually the radius you've got the intensity and you've got the exposure in all of them now, this is a question that I get a lot, the difference between exposure and intensity. So basically, exposure specifies the, uh, the amount of light emitted from the light source. But the difference is it's in an exponential scale, whereas the intensity is just a multiplier on the exposure value. And it's on a linear scale, not exponential scale. So the way that you see things is a little bit different. By the way, um, if you're wondering if we can change or overwrite this value we, we certainly can so i can actually increase that to a much higher value which i will this um, lamp is very close to the wall so i can probably make it a little bit um, not too close now by the way if you want to select just a component of a group node you can just hold down control and click and now I'm only selecting the cover or the hood of the floor lamp. You can scroll all the way down and you have translucency. I can go in here and sort of tint that translucency as well. I can hold down control, click on the wall and the reflection that I'm getting can be more diffused or it can be um, kind of glossy. I'm just gonna crank up the a roughness of the wall to a very high value and lower the specularity of it because I don't want the wall to get as much or as many uh, yellow points so uh, but something really that simple you can see how much I'm adding to the look or to the character of the model and you know what the beauty of it is Anytime you have doubts about some of these parametric models, you can just hold down control, click on this wall here, go to object, you can say, you know what, um, I might actually change the uh, location of the windows. So I'm just gonna go and make it slightly thinner. So that level of customizability is what makes um, this application so, so great. We barely scratch the surface obviously you can go to environment lights you can go to some of these presets that is available to you and make use of them for example you can click on this studio 4 get a much different result you can kind of tint your lights by going and selecting on one of these let's say um, I don't know outdoor lights and all of a sudden you get a lot of different colors and tints to coming into your model there's so many that you can try um, for example that's going to give you a very nice night-ish look you can go to background um, change the blur like so or um, just decrease the blur change the opacity if you want um, the ground itself you can do a lot of different things with it now I'm going to continue with uh, this process, add a few bits and pieces, duplicate, uh, for example, the floor lamp uh, to the other side of the couch, you know, add bits and pieces here and there, uh, bring in a, a more suitable light to the environment. And in the next chapter, I'll show you how to deal with collision in Substance Stager, which is pretty cool option. All right, here I am only a few minutes later. Um, I duplicated the floor lamp to the other side. I brought one of these ready to go spiral staircase model. I used the text tool to kind of uh, add more stuff into the shelf. Use one of these decorative ready to go um, uh, abstract spiral thingy in here. Add a glass, 
uh, put a cap and bottle again using some of these ready to go objects just to occupy the um, the scene a little bit uh, and if I go to the environment there's nothing too special about it if I go to lights I actually used this HDR image if I scroll up uh, oh actually it's in the light uh, this Studio 8 HDR and cranked up the intensity. I didn't want to rotate it much. So that's just like five minutes. That's what I did. So we have more personality in the in the room. Now let's talk about collision. And this is really cool because it allows your object to interact with other objects. But in order to do that, you basically need to enable the global collision tool first. Now, where can we find it? It's actually on the drop down top menu under object and you can see enable disable collision is um, is here and the letter C you can toggle it on and off. So I can just press C to toggle this. Now, once that's done, I mean, this setting is shared by all transform tools like select, move, rotate and, and scale tool and it's a global toggle. It does not affect per object collision setting. It's just a global setting that needs to be on before you see any other settings. We have collision objects in, in the properties as well. So if I, let's say, click on this little guy, I can actually turn off ray tracing and press F to see matte. Uh, if I go in the properties, you can see I have collision also available per object which you can turn on and off. So if we move this back a little bit, you can see I can turn on its collision, but now it doesn't collide with the table because we also need to turn on the collision for the table as well. And now if I select mat and boom, you can see how it collides with the object. Uh, pretty cool actually, you can see even you can tilt as a as a result of the collision that you have and create some sort of an interactivity in here. So pretty, um, pretty interesting. You can actually go in here and increase the collision quality in here as well. I'm just going to move this back, push this down. We have concave, which collider will follow um, cavities and insects in the object. Whereas with convex, if I set that to convex, the collider will only follow the outer bound. So which again is something that you probably want and you save simulation time on that as well. So it's just going to follow the outer. And we have surface, which is generates a two sided collider uh, when an object is a thin plane uh, for geometry is used for for a polyplane like that. But that's basically how Collider works and it kind of allows you to kind of sit the object on the table. I can do the same thing for the hat, bring the hat, uh, make sure the collision for the table is also enabled and you can actually now interact. You can see with the with the table and get an interesting result. You can kind of simulate that falling down as well, <laughs> which is really, really cool. So um, very cool option and totally available uh, to you guys to get a much better, uh, more accurate representation. I'm just gonna turn on ray tracing. Now, I think I'm in a position now to go ahead and create my viewport and render out my scene. Now let's get to how to create a camera. First things first, you can undo your camera here. Um, you can create a new camera. So I'm just gonna frame a new camera, rather um, stage the scene, just look after the composition just a little bit. Uh, maybe 55 would be a good one. If you wanna get too artistic, um, you can use 35. Um, kind of intensify the perspective a little bit and that can be your camera if you want to switch to a viewport then you can toggle between the viewport let's say on the viewport I can just work on this uh, lamp and change it uh, while I've got the camera in here and I can just toggle and viewport to camera 
like so and get the job done uh, what i really like oops, i don't know why this guy is hovering uh, what i really like about um this is you can actually apply depth of field and get super artistic with it so i can actually move this uh, mat forward and say all right i just want to select my camera node and i'm going to enable depth of field now it says where you want to focus you can say set focus point and just click on set focus point and you can see the uh, instant result that the background gets blurred you can just specify how much uh, blur you would like to get uh, you know shallow deep depth of field you would like to get and these are the things that you can adjust and um, basically switch to render now and yeah that's almost ready to be rendered so let's go into render settings and see what options are available to us uh, on that page now i'm going to go to render and you can see uh, you can render the camera uh, it says what resolution you would like to render um, what unit would you like to use uh, what name you would like to give this and also give you the path you would like to have it as PSD or PNG and then uh, yeah it's very very straightforward you can overwrite some of these values for example if you want to get uh, 720p you can add that if you want to get 4k you can do that but um, once you're happy with your render settings you can just set it to render you can render with obviously gpu if you have a decent uh, gpu minus 30 70 is not the the most high end but it's not really an old gpu either it gets the job done uh, we have some presets you can go to high and you can see increasing the samples that way you can get rid of the noise a little bit uh, resolution set to full you can go set to half and a quarter um, well, I don't know why you want to render low resolution. If you want to render low resolution, just see it in the design with the ray tracing on. Uh, and yeah, with that, you can just hit render. It starts calculating. Um, and basically, you can just see your scene like so. Um, and I'll wait for this to be finished in a few seconds and we can have a look at the image. All right. Render's done. What it did, it created a PSD file, which I can open inside, uh, let's say Photoshop, and you can just start tweaking your um, uh, image. So for example, in here, I just wanted to do something really, really quick. So added an adjustment layer, added a little bit of vibrance, added vignette. But the cool thing about that, if you forget about all the post-processing work that you can do, uh, it actually gives you layers. So you have your render and you have your HDR and the environment like along with the background color that you pick. So somehow it reminds me of um, Marmoset Toolbag a little bit and maybe key shot a little bit. So you can bring your object, you can assign materials to it. Um, it's really compatible with other um, Substance 3D apps like Substance Designer or Sampler or Painter. You can bring in materials back and forth, create something in Designer, bring it into Stager, uh, again, tweak something in Painter, bring it into Stager, create a material in Sampler, bring it into Stager and kind of stage your scene together. Again, um, I will put together a tutorial on how to bring an external model and do some work on it as opposed to uh, what we did here, which was really a quick start. We barely scratched the surface. That's it. I hope you find this video useful. I hope you use Stager in your own uh, workflow or pipeline. Stay safe. Talk to you guys soon.